So let's get into our first topic, man. We're going to talk about some NBA, and we're going to bring in our special guest. I think we can call this guy a, a friend of the program because, obviously, one of my friends in real life. We've got the homie <laughs> Big Waz in the house. If you don't know him, for everything he does, man, he is part of the Ringer, Spotify, the podcast, uh, group chat. He's count the dings. This man has done so many things in his time, man. He has taken – time out of his busy schedule out there in vegas to join us how you doing my brother i'm fantastic man happy to be on with you bros man always happy to be on with y'all definitely glad you could be on man how first of all how was vegas um it's pretty dope honestly man um i thought it was just a brilliant idea when they presented the in-season tournament um to bring it here because obviously it's a place the players love to come and fan bases will want to come, right? Like people will want to travel to Vegas to watch their favorite team hoop and, you know, maybe catch a show, maybe play a little blackjack or roulette and keep it pushing. It's just a great place to host an event like this. So, yeah, it's dope. And, you know, of course, like I get off my plane and it's like literally like a million cowboy hats because there's some rodeo convention happening this weekend. Oh, okay. You know, like they got Garth Brooks performing at this shit. Like I'm talking about like it's everywhere you go, every hotel you go to, it's like cowboy hats everywhere. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. And that's like, and that's kind of the beauty of Vegas that they we could bring those worlds together, right? The NBA fan and, and people who like to watch cats ride horses or or bulls. Is that's what they ride at the rodeo, right? It's bulls, I think. Yeah. I, I think it's well. I know one thing the yeah. Bulls aren't riding. That's wins in the Eastern Conference. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's just get right to it, man. Uh, so my first question for you, you kind of just, you know, talked about a little bit. You know, with the in-season tournament, this, I believe, was an idea that I hated it when it first came out. Now, I just want to be very clear. I don't like a lot of stuff when it first comes out. Uh, you know, <laughs> me, and, me and change don't really do well right away. I have to be taught into it i thought it was a dumb idea i was like why do we care about an in season tournament like that's not even gonna matter but it has been phenomenal i personally have enjoyed it and this we're not we're in a thick of football season where i usually don't pay mm -hmm. attention to the nba till christmas day and even then i don't care again till really after the super bowl but i've been locked in watching all these games it's been a great environment it's been you know real uh competition of course the money has something to do with it too but it's also you can feel just a competitive nature so what did, what was your original thoughts of the play-in tournament and how you feel about it now yeah and and this is documented too like i was fully on board from the start because to me it's, it's really simple um when people are like oh nobody's gonna give a damn about the games in november I argued at the time that people care about the stuff that the players care about. So, yes, a lot of times in early seasons or the dog days of March where the playoff seating is basically set, the teams who suck, we know they suck, and we still got, you know, another 15, 17 games left. Yes, it could get – it could drag on. But that's an 82-game season, right? To ask players to show up 82 times and treat it like the Super Bowl – it's crazy. That's impossible. Yeah. So we're going to get those sort of lackluster games in between. I understand that. I'm, I've am i been a proponent for shortening the season for years now. I really do think we should pay two games a week, do it like European soccer, and I bet you we'd get much better outcomes. You know, just shorten the season, make it a full rob round robin. You know, every team plays each other twice, one time on each other's court, and keep it pushing to the playoffs. But I digress. That's just another gripe of mine. I think the season's too fucking long. <laughs> but... You know, I was like, look, if we put real stakes involved, meaning money, and um, we tell the players, like, yo, this is important, um, and, and that they should treat it as such, then we're going to like the outcome. We're going to like the games. When NBA players are going hard and it feels like stakes, then it, then we, we, we're compelled by that. Like, I'll make the example. Like, sometimes, you know, back when the Warriors and, and the Cavs were a thing, Right. Uh, yeah. There was no championship on the line in the regular season matchup or the heat in the Bulls, for instance, for you, Scott. You got up for those games. You were more yeah. excited for those games. They didn't happen in the playoffs. We find ways to get excited about games when we know the players care about it. When we know Joe yeah. Kim, don't fuck with LeBron and them. Right. <laughs> and vice versa. Like we get up for those games. And so if we could put stakes on games, whether it be money here um, or, you know, legitimate animus in other cases, people are going to care and want to watch that. 
and tune in. And the money aspect, you know, why I thought the money would matter is because $500,000 is not a lot to LeBron James, but the 15th man on the roster who's going to make 800000 this year, that's a lot of fucking money. It's going to change his family's life. You know, yeah. and these guys are teammates. Like, you want to do that for your teammate. You want to win, you know. And for guys like Tyrese Halliburton, who, you know, he mentioned, like, he had only played in one national TV game his whole career Which, before you this year. Think about it. it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I mean, your ass was in Sacramento. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Nobody want to watch that shit, but we didn't <laughs> anyway back then, right? And so, you know, the guys being into it, just to reiterate, like, as long as the, the, the players are taking it seriously, we're going to enjoy what we're watching. So let's talk about the game itself. We got the, the Pacers versus the um the Lakers. Um, I know that I was hoping for two non-blue blood teams uh, because <laughs> I wanted to see somebody that we don't necessarily see as a favorite to win the NBA championship, um, be the first winner in this. But we also have, you know, what the media is putting together as like, you know, damn near like a changing of the guard the way you see them mm -hmm. talking about Tyrese Halliburton versus LeBron mm -hmm. James. Um, so, so how does this game look to you? And who's an X factor? Like who is somebody that we need to pay attention to on Saturday? So just to go back to yesterday, because again, this is the first time they're putting this event on, you know, the funky ass 2 p.m. start time, which so many people. Which was media, crazy. Like, <laughs> so many of my media homies were pissed off about it. They're just like, this is ridiculous. Who's going to show up for this? Blah, 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 blah. And my homies had talked to people in the NBA. They was like, nah, we, we damn near sold this game out. Uh -huh. And slowly but surely, man, by six minutes left in the first quarter, the arena was packed, bro. Like, it was a legitimate atmosphere and energy. And what I will say about the Pacers, you know, obviously ended up winning that, that first game. They came out from the jump. And they were into it. Like, their bench was going crazy, yelling at yep. people, going nuts for every shot. Like, they came here to get this done, you know. And so Halliburton being their spiritual and their spiritual leader, emotional leader, and also obviously being their best player on the court and their leader in that sense, no different, man. This guy was locked in from the very beginning. And, um, you know, I thought, I thought Neesmith had a dope game. You know, obviously, it's like a bear of a job for a six foot six guy to be trying to guard Giannis's huge ass. Yeah. Um, I thought he he gave it his all, and more than that, it's like his energy and his temperament. To me, he's an X factor because, like, he had like four or five fouls yesterday. Uh, I tell you guys, he was not cheated on any of them. This motherfucker, nah, he earned is them. Yeah. He yeah. is a yo. He will hit you, bro. And so, like that kind of energy. That permeates throughout the team. You feel me? Like that physicality, everybody understands, like, yo, we here to really get something done. And so Neesmith to me is somebody to watch. And I think Miles Turner, man, I've been Turner high forever. Um, I don't uh, like I was so happy when they traded Sabonis because the idea that they would emphasize the Sabonis dude, you know, a six foot eight center with alligator arms. I never understood that. Uh, I always thought Miles Turner was a better player specifically if you have aspirations to win serious basketball. Incredible rim protector, runs the floor, shoots the ball, you know, just an incredible locker room guy, just the highest character guy. Um, Miles Turner I thought was incredible because but for Miles Turner, y'all, Indiana doesn't have – they they might as well just be traffic homes. You know right. what I mean? Like Miles Turner is the back line of the defense, and I thought he was excellent yesterday. He outscored Dame Lillard, for God's sakes. So to me, Miles Turner and Neesmith for the guys that y'all should be watching. Halliburton's going to do what he do, but Miles Turner in his matchup against AD and his guard in the paint against LeBron's, you know, forays into to the rim. So, yeah, Miles Turner, definitely look, look out for him tomorrow. Do you think, before we go to you, Dante, do we think, do you think that, uh, you know, when it comes to how the Lakers have been playing, like to me, as I, I tweeted yesterday, and this is how me and Wild's friendship began with our uh, 
Bulls heat battles. Like, yes, people, like it's actually funny now because Roz, I, I wouldn't say that you're not a witness anymore, but it, it kind of feels like it's different. Once he, it's, it's, different. it's different. When he left Miami, <laughs> he was like, yo, I like Bill and Brian. What you doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I just, the, 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 just going back to Dan Gilbert's team after he called you out your name and all of this crazy shit. I was like, nah, Brian, we shouldn't be doing that. But yeah. <laughs> As like as, as a career uh LeBron hater, uh I was just like, man, like what he's doing right now is like asinine. Like I've only ever seen this from any the only other athlete I've ever seen this from is Tom Brady. Like that I can yeah. I mean, maybe Serena, but I don't know uh tennis like that. So if I'm if that if she last time I saw Serena, she was getting cooked, but don't 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 quote me on that. <laughs> Yo, chill, I'm, man. Man. They you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you what I saw. The black uh, queens gonna come for you, boy. <laughs> I, I want no problems. I love I love Serena, I love Beyonce. Okay, leave me alone. I'm just saying, uh, to me, the last time I saw somebody play this elite is Tom Brady. And so when mm-hmm. you see it from LeBron, like, and I love how he said in the press conference, not the press conference, post-game interview, um, where he said, you know, it's a it's a big game, but let's be real, it's still December. He's still thinking about June and trying to get title number five. As somebody who I'm like, yo, I can put my hate aside, because honestly, there's really nothing he even said about the dude anymore. Like, at yeah. this point, no matter what side of the goat finch on, like, there's nothing he can yeah. do to be over Michael Jeffrey Jordan for me. And that, if, you're, yeah. if you're a Bron fan, same thing. So I just kind of look at it as, as a guy who's been a fan here since day one. Like, how do we take, like, what he's been doing and kind of appreciate it to – we got the young guys, like you just talked about Tyrese Halliburton. This is a big moment for him. And, like, LeBron's still here. Like it's twenty. I'm thirty five. He's been doing this since I was fifteen. He's still here. What? What? How do? How do you look at it? How should everybody here's, pretty much appreciate this? Here's how you put it in perspective. And yesterday, because I was, I had some pretty good seats yesterday. I'm not gonna hold you. I was oh, pretty yeah, close to yeah. the floor. I you saw know, that on I, your IG. It looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see the sweat beads coming down the <laughs> head. All right. Um. Here's how you put it in perspective. They're playing the Pelicans and Zion. Just look at his career thus far. He is severely out of shape. By the time tip-off um, happened, I swear, y'all, I might have saw a cold in his eye like he just woke up from a nap. So let's, let's look at how Zion has decided to conduct his career. The lack of dedication, seriousness, professionalism. Yeah. that he's decided to treat his talent with, and LeBron. So let's just imagine LeBron didn't take his career this serious. His, his body, his training, his, his commitment to his ambassadorship of yeah. the NBA, the fact that he cares so much. Where would the NBA be without this guy taking his career this serious? Where would the NBA be if when LeBron was in John Morant's position – to be the next face of the league, he treated his his responsibility so recklessly and carelessly. So that's how you put LeBron in perspective. We have the counterfactual, right? We have young guys with this immense promise and potential, and we want to hand it to them, and they just don't do it, right? And so for LeBron to have all of that shit on his shoulders and to come out and have the career that he's had and to come out and keep his nose clean, and to come out and be the person who's like, yes, I'm going to take the mantle of literally the ambassador of the NBA. Like, we don't even got to take it to Zion, who's like, just, it's just embarrassing, y'all. Like, yeah, I'm it's a, it, it, he looked bad yesterday. And I'm the last nigga to be talking about anybody way. But that nigga he, looked bad yesterday. He looked crazy. We could take it to AD, who's had a fine career. Yeah. But that nigga don't want to be nobody's ambassador. Nope. He don't want to be the face of the league. He wants to go to work and go home. He don't want the extra responsibilities. He doesn't want that place on his shoulders. So LeBron, man, people are standing on his shoulders. You know, just the fact that Desmond Bain, fine player, okay? The NBA is in such a place that a Desmond Bain can get 40 M's a year. He's a fine player, y'all. You know what it takes to make 40 M's a year in baseball? You a gotta lot. be top five in the league. You gotta be Justin Verlander. You gotta be you gotta be you gotta be fucking Kate. You gotta be fucking Kate up to make 40 million a year in baseball. You know what I mean? And so for LeBron to help do his part to, you know, take it from Shaq and them and KG and them and Duncan and them and Kobe and them, 
to keep it going and keep the league in a good place so the young guys can now come in and be able to earn these substantial contracts. Generations of their family, you know, ain't got to worry about nothing, man. I mean, that's that's all I can say. And then on the floor, I mean, that's another part of it. Like, the, the guy was fucking amazing yesterday. It was, it was, crazy, it was incredible. Man. I was legitimately grateful to be in the building to watch that. 30 points on 12 shots. And every time out, he's hamming it up with the Lakers section. <laughs> I can't hear you yeah, doing yeah. all of that. I'm like, yo, this is. you would think by this time, like, he's over it. He's tired of it. He's done so much. He's like, no, bro. He's as locked in as he's ever been. You know what I mean? And so to me, that's the greatest compliment you could pay the guy is, is the responsibility that was handed with to him and the seriousness with which he 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 carried it, man. Like you gotta you gotta tip your cap to that. Definitely. Yeah, bro, definitely. Uh, but like to your point, like you said, LeBron, he's done all these amazing things, but you know, he's on his way out the door. And so we've seen, you know, a lot of young teams coming up, and two teams in particular the Orlando Magic and the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, they've been doing some really good things so far this season. Um, do you think that's something that's just, you know, the typical early hot start and then they're going to fizzle out? Or are these two teams that we could you know, officially say are a year, to, a year ahead of schedule? So yeah, I think I think I think they're a year ahead of schedule, and it's and and it's different reasons for both teams. The Magic, they've made themselves into an elite defense, which is something that travels, which is something that's going to be consistent night to night. That's something they could literally fall back on. There's going to be nights where the threes aren't falling, where you don't get the calls and get to go to the line for some efficient scoring, and but you're stopping the other team, and you and so you're still in it. You know, having an elite unit. That shit goes a long way, right? Um, and and if you watch the Magic play, I, I would encourage anybody who has league pass to watch these kids play, cause these guys they give a fuck, man. Like they yep. they go hard, they go hard. They run their shit every single set they run on offense. They run it hard, and on defense they're getting into guys, you know, boxing the hell out of people, you know, uh, the help defense. They play on the string. All of those cliches, the Magic embody that. And so that's going to that's gonna be there all year long, whether the shots are falling or not. So I think they're legitimate. And you got to give a credit to, to Moe's, Coach Moe's, because um, they, they, he's coaching them up. They're playing very hard. And OKC, the reason why they're legit, they have a legitimate first-team All-NBA guy, MVP candidate guy. So every single night they go onto the court with who is probably the best player on the floor in Shea Gilgis-Alexander. And again, another group of guys that play hard. You know, um, it's a lot of young guys, so they could do that more often on a night-to-night -night basis than a veteran-laden group. And so, yeah, Magic don't have an All NBA guy yet, but Shea Gilgis Alexander is as good as it gets at the wing position, y'all. Like he's playing as well as anybody, and I mean anybody. I'm talking about Steph. I'm talking about Book. I'm talking about Dame. I'm talking about anybody who's a wing. I'm talking about Luca. He's playing as well as all of them. And some nights he gets the better of them. And so when you could bring that on a night-to-night -night basis, you have all this length, all this athleticism, you know, and a, and a pretty good coach, even though nobody knows who the hell he is. I, I still don't. Um, I was about to ask you the name. Mark Dagno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my they cousin. Do, That's my cousin. They, they got to do, uh, they gotta do uh, who he played for for coaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they, 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 to get to your question, Dante, they're both legit. Both of them are legit. And and that's funny. We'll segue from, from the Magic and, and the Thunder to the team that I represent as a resident light skin and a resident Bulls fan from Chicago. Mm. What is wrong with the Bulls and the Warrior? Outside of the fact that my GM, he did the rebuild, he did the rebuild for the Magic better than he did for the Bulls. Man. <laughs> I mean, I think they've gotten pretty much all that they could get out of this group. And I think the main thing, I love Zach Levine as a player. And if you guys remember, before he got his deal, there was a lot of back and forth in the press between him and the front office, where he got the sense that they didn't want to pay him. And the front office was like, yo, I don't know if this dude is a difference maker. Like, should I be giving this guy $200 million if he doesn't change my life? You know, like, and, I, and at the time, I understood that. And then you add in the injury history, which is extensive for Zach, unfortunately. 
And I think just Zach is not a Shea. He's not a Luca. He's not a Booker. He's not a he's not that type of game changing young guy. And so they're at an impasse. And that's that's just what it is. DeRozan obviously is on the back half of his career. I've never been a Vucci main guy ever. I, I, I was just like, I don't understand why you like a dude who maxes out at 18 points a game and, you know, marginal defense and whatever. I get it. He's a nice player, but I don't know why you would cast your lot with him. Um, I just think they got everything that they could get. And then, unfortunately, man, the version that we saw with Lonzo, um, which to me obviously was the best version of this team, it couldn't come to fruition because of his injuries. And so... You know, this just happens in the NBA. You know, sometimes you try a thing and it doesn't work out and, and everybody has to move on. And then you have the added layer that Zach Levine feels mortally wounded by Billy Donovan sitting him at some point last year. Um, you know, uh, it's just it's, it's basically it's irreparable at this point. There's nothing to do. They got to move them. Um and I think teams should want to bring Zach Levine in. I think he's a good, good ass player. You know, I don't know if you want to bring him in to be your your savior, but like if you want to win and you have a nice foundational pieces there, you know, say a Miami, say a Los Angeles, you know, um, even say a Philly with Joel Embiid over there, I think he would be a fantastic value add. Um, but the idea that he could come in and be the focal point of something that was special, I think yeah. we've 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 seen that that's not going to be the case. Now, with the like you said, when it comes to like the Warriors, like I feel like that's something that when the trade happened, I, you, you already know. First of all, I wanted to throw up when the trade happened because you know how I feel about that State Farm agent. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I was like, I gotta wish him well because he's playing with my favorite player. So I'm not shocked <laughs> that this is happening. Uh, Clay looks like a shell of himself. Draymond too busy trying to be Debo. Um, it's just it's just a whole mess over there. And I said on the show a couple weeks ago, and I stand by it. Now I know this is kind of like not in Steph's DNA, but it would not shock me if he's like, yo, y'all better get this together. If I give me a, a ask for a trade request, y'all give me the fuck up out of here. Because we talk about LeBron, Steph's still playing well at his age. So what do you think yeah. is going on with Golden State? I love what Chuck told uh, Bob Myers yesterday in the, in, the, in the crossover. He said, you got off the Titanic right in time. And then you know, Bob Myers like, I have friends <laughs> over there. He said, well, you're going to be looking at them in the eye soon. So, <laughs> what do you think about, you know, everything going on with the champs? Well, not so, the champs, but like the, the dynasty. It's a couple of things. I think the injuries to Gary Payton, part two, and um, Chris Paul, who, say what you want, when he's played, he's played pretty well. Um, it's just, you know, at his age and his injury history, it is what it is, man. The guy's missed a lot of time, and I think that's really hurt them. And then you combine that with Clay's struggles and Wiggins. I think the oh, Wiggins yeah. struggles have been the most just like, yeah. God damn, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, act like... Act like you give a shit, bro. It's bad enough you missed half of the damn season for some mystery issue. For some mystery thing, yeah. I have it on good authority what it is. Now, I was we about to say, I was like, that. you probably know. We'll talk about that off air. Yeah. We can talk about that off mic some other time. Yeah. But um, yeah. And you're going to laugh, honestly. You're going to laugh. You're going to say <laughs> this, is, this is a fucking joke. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, that. And by the way, because – so just so, just to – to bring your your people, your audience behind the curtain a little bit. So, like, when with the Wiggins thing last year, it's all this stuff. The, the, the organization is keeping it mum, right? They know why he's out, but they're keeping it close to the vest. And then they trot out this. Mitchell Wiggins was, was sick, which he was. You know, the guy mm -hmm. was sick. And, and you know, and the idea, they, they, they didn't say it in so many words, but the idea was that Wiggins couldn't hoop. Um, cause his dad was sick. Here's why I'm skeptical. Andrew Wiggins' brother plays in fucking Lebanon. That nigga ain't come home for this. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins. That's a good point. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins has a thirty million dollar a year job that he's not going to, yeah. allegedly for his dad and his brother. Couldn't leave whatever peanuts they paying him in Lebanon for. <laughs> 
come on, folks. Come it on, folks. Make any anyway. Sense. I, I would speak. say this where you're going. This I know, like, um, and Don, you, you get, yes, this is what I was saying too, why it makes sense what you're saying. Because it, it's kind of the same thing with the Bears and the mysterious letting go of the defensive coordinator, Allen Williams. And I was at the facility that day when he got fired. And it was like, there was a whole bunch of things. It was like, oh, well, the FBI came up here because he did something. And I was like, nigga, I've been parked in the front. They definitely would have came to all the black people first. If there was any FBI here. So, like, I, I don't know that as soon as I got past the security. So, I didn't see that. Come to find out, well, this is not confirmed. Let me say that since I'm a member of the Bears media. I have to say this is not confirmed. But it sounds like he was on Pornhub instead of trying to figure out how to stop Jordan Love. So, you know Lord how the, the, the organizations try Lord to hurt stuff out there. So, yeah. yeah that's how Man I was it. choking whoa, the whoa, chicken whoa. on company hours. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Whoa, whoa, Unbelievable. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My so man Wiggins, here, my man was out here searching. Hey, yeah, that's what you saying? Hey man, he was I'm typing just, in all uh, kinds of pogs hey, and whatnot. You know, you know them niggas at the Hell Washington Library who be in the, in right, the park, yes. computer in the corner. One yes. of them, yeah. on, man. Everybody but, knows yeah. you're not supposed to do wow. that. On your <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, though, uh, G. But yeah, Wiggins thinking up the joint and Clay. It's everything. It's the injuries. It's Clay and Wiggins stinking up the joint. It's the young guys not panning out in, in such a way that, you know, damn, bro, we thought we, we had one with Kaminga. Moody's been better recently, but, like, even Moody, it's like, it's all of those things. Yeah, that's that compounded three. To My bad to interrupt you, but that's three young people that didn't work out, yeah. which is quite confusing to me. Like, you, you, you will yeah. see, like, maybe one not work out, but Wiseman yeah. didn't work out. Moody's not working out. Kaminga's not working out. That's strange yeah. to me from a coaching development standpoint. Yeah. Is it their fault? Or are we looking past what might not be happening in, in San Francisco? So I'm I'm friends with a lot of Warriors fans. And if if you ask the fans, the reason why they're really pissed about the young guys is like Shout out the homies at Warriors World. Shout out to them. Yeah, those those are our our guys. If it, it like it's like you passed up on Lamelo, talking about he's quote unquote not a Warriors type of player, just because his dad is a loudmouth. Meanwhile, this guy's a ball movement shooter, huge wing, mm -hmm. perfect for what these people do. Uh, like super cerebral, understands the game at a high and level, and he's light skin. We would have, we would have, we would, we would have got the approval gone through. I'd have sent the Drake, I'd have sent the Steph. He's been good. And so it's some of the guys that they passed up on that has compounded this. Right? You'll hear about the Halliburtons. You'll hear about the Franz Wagner's because you know to bring up another Magic star. Like to to, to a lot of the fans, they passed up on some guys. That would have been so excellent on this team and next to Steph. And so that's where I think a lot of the consternation stems from. So, yeah, you can say it was a failure. These, these young guys, and even Jordan Poole, who panned out, he got a big second deal. He's out of town, and he's thinking it up, you know? And so, yeah, it, it's it's I understand the frustrations from the fan base in terms of the young guys, them not being able to find and develop younger guys to to supplement what was staff in the core four or core three um do yeah man and, and also you know sometimes you know things gotta end bro they, they've been on top for a long time uh, on, yeah. on on unprecedented run um you know what i'm saying so this is a franchise uh, there's no no success zero success yes before yeah. 2013 no Before success. 2013 yeah zero they had the and, rick berry situation championship or whatever and that's it it's been an aptitude. It's been a joke. They were a laughing stock. I remember my boy Ethan, who you know, who started on the beat for for ESPN. He was like, "Yeah, when I first started the beat in Oracle Arena, yeah, people passing blunts in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> you know, legalize it, hashtag legalize it. But goddamn, you can't you can't pass blunts at the Garden. No bullshit. <laughs> you, can't, I, you can't do that. No bullshit. I know somebody that ran up a milli, that ran up a milli off of. The Warriors, back when they had Monte, you know, like when you go to Six Flags and you can go to get the Pepsi or the Coca-Cola can, dollar tickets, consistently buying those tickets and eventually buying out seats in the Oracle and basically cashing out. He ended up owning like 50 seats in that stadium. That's incredible. 
that, that's that's crazy, man. Uh, as we get you up out of here, bro, I just want to name the stat that, that Mikey put in the chat. Actually, not stat, but TNT Sports announces that the Lakers Pelicans telecast last night delivered the most watched NBA regular season games since opening week, averaging 2.2 million viewers across TNT, TBS, True TV, and Max. Of uh, viewership for the Lakers in season tournament season final win was up 66 percent over the latest uh TNT average December. So obviously that stuff is working, man. So that, that's good for the league. Yeah, um, people watching it, and you know, again, and that and that was a game that was a you know a forty point blowout, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, it's a process of getting people to understand what's happening with the tournaments. That's what the court is for. It's like distinguishing this thing. And I really think, and I think they should. I think eventually they should get this thing to a million. I really do. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a good thing. It's going to be a fun thing to watch, see where teams are at. Like, because even me, I, I have championship hopes for the Bucks. just seeing where they're at yesterday yeah. in a game that I know they're taking seriously, that there's legitimate stakes, to see where they where they st- where they measure up right now in their pursuit of a championship. Like, this is just cool, man. It's dope. I was going to, uh, as we're going to wrap this up, I was going to give – um, as as I bring Courtney here, we'll, but I was I was going to name a certain Milwaukee Buck my goofy mog of the week because of things he said. But I got a certain call last night, so I'm not going to do that. It's all love to everybody over there. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, man, who you got in the game tomorrow? Um, you know, and uh, you know, just let them know where they get where they get in contact with you, man. Um, man, I I don't know, man. Haven't seen LeBron yesterday. Just how locked in he is, and how I know he's taking the shit so ultra mega seriously. I just, I just don't think he's gonna be denied, man. <laughs> like it's only right that this guy add one more trophy to the mantle. Um, people could say it's insignificant or whatever, but like from the very beginning, from group play, look, if you watch the group play games, LeBron was going mad hard. Was going crazy, <laughs> like, it was ridiculous. Like, I'm so, going to Vegas. And and so and exactly and so I think I think the Lakers are gonna win. I really do. I think they match up well defensively. I like what Cam Reddish has become for them, the sort of head of the snake on defense. He's taking on the primary ball handler assignment and he's taking it seriously. I think somebody's gotten into Cam Reddish's ear and told him, listen, if you guard people, you're gonna get paid. And so he's guarding the hell out of folks right now. Um, and so I just I just love what the, the matchup they present for Indiana. LeBron, you know, he's going to do his old man game, walk that shit up the floor. Ain't going to be none of that up and nope. down um, tomorrow because LeBron ain't got the knees for it. And so I think it's going to be a much lower possession game than Indiana's used to. And just on the execution-wise, like, if you know, Indiana's defense isn't great. It's very leaky. And, and I think, you know, LeBron going to figure out a way to pick them boys apart and, 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 and hoist that trophy in the end. Definitely, man. Uh, Wise, by the way, this is Courtney. Courtney, this is Wise. We have what up, Court? You are on. You on mute, Courtney? There you go. No, no, oh, you don't. Want, oh, there we go. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah we, I wasn't we have corru- speaking just now. We we have corrupted her. She was a nice human being before we started this show. And I now am she's still one of a us. nice human being. Just, 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 just don't get your twi- <laughs> just don't get your Twitter banned like my son Scott for oh, cursing. No, I have had my Twitter since two thousand nine. The same account. I yeah. am don't end up like Scott and lose all your followers because you was talking green. Honestly, honestly. That was the best thing to have in my career. Shout out to Cody Parkey. Because who knows what things I was saying, what 21-year-old Scott was saying, Wait. while he was tweeting uh, at the Columbia College hallways. Who knows what I was saying? Yes, who Cody knows? Cody Parkey is well, the reason that you're not on your original account. Yeah, account? because when, when he missed that kick, the double joint. And by the way, I didn't say nothing about him that day. They found a tweet from when he missed four that's kicks in October. Crazy. And I said I was going <laughs> to strangle him. So that's when we got my account up out of there. So, yeah. I was actually very calm. I was actually very calm. Cool I walked down Melrose for about 45 minutes, and I would have walked to the Grove if my phone wasn't about to die. But oh, uh, we're going to get you up out of here, bro. Uh, it's yeah, always good to talk to you, my G. Y'all can, y'all can find me, Big Wise, every single social media platform, B-I-G-W-O-S. Um, yeah, man, salute to you guys. Love what you guys are doing. We'll holler soon. Be good. Definitely, bro. I will be back on California soil next month. No, I'm on the first, so I will holler at you there, my brother. Good luck. Always good to talk to you. Then paper on his player head.